Today I've got a rear tote from a Stanley number no. 4 bench plane. Uh, as you can see, it is broken. It's actually been broken once before, right there. So rather than fix it for a second time, we're just going to make a whole new tote. And what we're going to use today is a piece of this beautiful walnut. As you can see, I've traced out the outline, and now we're just going to cut it out and continue the rest of the process. Here I'm just cutting off the waste using the table saw sled. Make sure you leave the top and the bottom flat so you can drill the counter bores and the through hole at the appropriate angle. And then we'll take it over to the bandsaw where we'll rough out the shape and get ready for the carving. Now you could do this if you didn't have a bandsaw, you could do it with a coping saw or a frame or turning saw, or you could even do it with a, a power jigsaw. So now on to the carving. I'm going to use a bunch of different tools to do the carving. Um, here I'm using a microplane. I've got both a flat and a curved microplane. And then I also use a round file a half round file uh, and then you'll also see me use a scraper and a carving chisel during this process. Now I'm doing all the carving by hand. The process took me about an hour to get a nice rough shape on it but you could uh, speed that process up. Um, I've seen guys use roundover bits on router tables to do the initial rounding, um, belt sanders, there's all kinds of different ways to do this carving. I'm just using the tools that I have, but you could really do it with uh, a belt sander and some hand sanding, and you could probably do the entire project with, with just those tools. Just go back and forth from one side to the other, and try and make the all the transitions nice and smooth, and make them fit your hand. That's one of the nice things about making a replacement tote is that you can make it comfortable for you. Some people find the original Stanley totes a little small for their hands so you can have the cutouts go deeper or if you've got small hands you can increase the size of those uh, flared sections and just make it fit your hand. The only section that I would tell you needs to be exactly like the original is the base of the tote. Some Stanley planes have a raised area where the tote goes and your tote needs to fit that area. You don't want it hanging over or you don't want it not to reach the edge of that. So look at the original tote that you've got if you've got it or the base of the plane and match that base exactly to that raised area if you have one. And here I'm just using the original tote to try and match as closely as possible the, the bottom section of the tote. I think the most challenging portion of this whole process is holding the work. Um, a leg vise does a good job on some sections, but other sections uh, you're really just going to have to come up with a, a better way to hold it. If I did a lot of these, I'd make some kind of fixture that used the through hole um, and the original mounting hardware and come up with some way to hold it but uh, but you can muddle through it with just a, a leg vise or a front vise. Luckily on the tote the only piece that needs to be flat is the base. Everything else as long as it's comfortable to you it's correct. Now when I'm done carving the tote uh, you're gonna have to start your sanding at a pretty low grit. I started at 80 grit um, up all the way through 400. Um, again, this is a shop tool, so I'm not trying to get a mirror finish on it, uh, but I do want it to be nice and smooth so it's comfortable when I'm using it. I'm not going to put you guys through the pain of watching me sand through all those grits, but that process takes almost as long as the initial carving. 
and that could be reduced depending on how smoothly you did the carving. Now once I've got it all roughed out, the next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of finish on it. Again, this is after I've sanded to 400. The finish that I'm using is just boiled linseed oil. I like my handles, uh, whether it's plain handles, hammer handles. I like the feel of boiled linseed oil and no other finish on the handle, so that's what I'm doing. See that beautiful grain in the wall. So now we're going to attach it to my number four plane. Let's screw down the retaining nut nice and tight. You want it to be nice and solid. And then we'll put the plane back together and put it to work. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching, and follow me on Instagram at ChessPiecesTX.